everybody, my name is Twani. I'm owner of Zuri Wine Tasting, and tonight I want to send a big, fat, fun, fabulous thank you to the wineries who powered our booth at LA Wine Fest this weekend. We had a really great time. We had an amazing time. We were able to entertain our crowd, and we had beautiful wines to pour. That was the most important thing. So I want to send a first thank you to Estelina Vineyards. Esterlina Vineyards was the first winery to get on board. They've actually been my friend in wine, my best business partner since um, I started Zuri Wine Tasting. The brother who owns the winery, one of the brothers who owns the winery, Stephen Sterling, actually contacted him a few years ago, told him what I was trying to do, told him what my mission was, and he came to LA and poured his wines for all my customers. Ever since then, I've been in love with his wines and my customers have been in love with his wines. So Esterlina is located in Sonoma, California. We poured the 2013 Merlot this weekend, and people absolutely loved it. They said that it was the best Merlot at the festival. Yes, that's right, and I am not exaggerating because he's my friend in wine. The things that I heard about the Merlot was that it had a little bit of a bite to it. It was full-bodied, and sometimes Merlots can seem a little thin, but this Merlot is not. This is a full-bodied Merlot, a little bit of a bite, but people who still like Merlot because it's smooth, it still has that smooth plum finish. So make sure you check out their website, Esterlina Winery, esterlina.com, esterlinavineyards.com. Thank you so much, Steve Sterling, for sending down your wine. I appreciate it. The next wine that I poured is my new friend in wine. So I met Theodora Lee. Yes, her name is Theodora. They call her in wine country in, in Sonoma. Well, she lives just north of Sonoma, but in wine country up north, they call her Theopatra, Queen of the Vines. And trust me, that's exactly what she's doing. She's doing some really magical Beautiful, romantic things with wines. I mean, check out the label on this bottle, right? That says it all. So Theodore Lee, she sent down two wines. She sent down a rosé, and she also sent down a symphony. The rosé was made with 100% Petite Syrah grapes, and it was beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. For some, it was a little bit of a disappointment, just because some people, when they think rosé, they think white Zinfandel. Please get that out of your head, okay? So, rosé. Rosé is a beautiful, beautiful type of wine, and it's not, it's not usually sweet. I mean, there's some rosés that can be sweet, but it's not usually sweet. So her rosé was absolutely gorgeous. It's 100% dry, no residual sugar whatsoever. It's, it has hints of fresh strawberries, and the color is this hot red, and it was just definitely delicious. It's the kind of wine that you can drink on a super hot day, eat with a hamburger, eat with some salmon. You can even have it with a ribeye. So everyone pretty much loved her rosé. As a matter of fact, I had two customers and each customer bought a case of her rosé. And then last, well, from her, I poured also a symphony. So symphony is the name of the grape. Yeah, check this out. So it's a hybrid grape. It's a cross between Moscato and Pinot Grigio. Nope, it's not a blend. It's actually a grape that was made in a lab. Of course, the wine isn't made in the lab, so they make the type of grape in the lab, and then they take the rootstock, and then they plant the rootstock, and they grow the grapes, and they make the wine in a vineyard. Um, but it's a hybrid grape, and it's a hybrid. It's a cross between Moscato and Pinot Grigio. And when you drink the wine, or when you smell the wine, you think, wow, it smells so floral, and just, like, there's this hint of sweetness. Like, you think about white, beautiful, sweet flowers, like lilies or calla lilies, and, um... When you taste it, though, it's not sweet at all. It's very fruity, it's crisp, but it's not sweet, which is awesome. I love it. It's more like a Pinot Grigio with just a hint of Moscato just for the smell, the aroma. Everyone loved them, that one as well. And then lastly but not least, I poured Par Charles Cabernet. So I poured his Cabernet because he gave me a variety of wines. This one that I'm holding in front of me, though, is the Red Blend. And his wine is just a crowd pleaser. It's a solid, drinkable, approachable wine that people really enjoy. And that's what I really like about his wine. I like his price, um, his price point. He has a really good price point. He's what you call a negotiant. So he doesn't necessarily own any vineyards, but what he does is he makes all these really good contracts with grape growers across Central California. He goes and he buys their grapes, and then he blends the juice to make the wine. So paulcharles.com, make sure you check them out, paulcharleswines.co. 
I got to get that right. Just look up Paul Charles Wines and you'll find them. <laughs> so again, I want to send a very, very special thank you to all the wineries that Paul powered my wine booth at LA Wine Fest this weekend. We had an amazing time. We met some really, really cool customers. And I also want to send a very special, close to my heart, thank you to the Zivas. The Zivas, Zuri wine tasting staff that came out in the hot sun and entertained folks. We gave out Zugs. Yes, Zugs. <laughs> And you will not appreciate a Zug until you have a Zug in person. And we gave out Z kisses, too. Um, but we had a really great time, and my staff was very awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you to my staff, the Zivas. Thank you to the wineries that provided wines for us to pour at LA Wine Fest. Thank you. Thank you for helping us get represented in a world where we are not always recognized. Thank you so much.